Odin is just a physical specimen. You don't see someone like this come out of college basketball all that often. And then they still run. Best center prospect since Patrick Ewing is Greg Oden. Greg Oden from Ohio State. He's got tremendous upside, he's a special player, and he's absolutely a winner. Since he entered high school, a once in a decade type of physical talent. Holy cow, Portland doesn't need this. I'll be remembered as the biggest bust in the history. But I can't do nothing about that. Greg Oden wasn't known as a good player, he was known as a generational one top player in the country for years, drafted ahead of one of the best players of all time, the collapse of Greg Oden's basketball career is one that deserves a retrospective view. Greg Oden was born in Buffalo, New York, and he was a standout player from the jump. After moving to Indiana at 9 years old, his gift for basketball was quite noticeable, I mean the guy was 6 foot 6 in middle school. Upon arrival at Lawrence North High School, it was clear that Greg Oden was not only the best in the country, but these kinds of players only come around once in a blue moon. Dominant is all you could say to describe his game, and that holds a lot of weight in Indiana as their culture is built on basketball. Along with his partner in crime with his teammate Mike Conley, no one else came close to the level that these guys were able to play at for the foreseeable future. Indiana knew that they had something special, and they were going to take the world by storm. He was catching NBA comparisons before he even made it to high school, and he was selling out crowds upwards of 4,500 people to watch him play as an 8th grader. Upon his high school arrival, his stats tell you the story. Efficient interior scorer, great rebounder, great defender, and a stature not too typical for a 15 year old. After being knocked out in the postseason, Courtney Lee of the state champion Pike High School referred to them as the hardest matchup they've played, and he was clearly right, as Odin and Conley would never lose a playoff game from that point onward. The two would go on to take home three straight state championships in dominating fashion, in a run that Indiana is going to remember for quite a while. It was exceptional. Odin had the talent of one of the greatest defensive anchors I've ever seen, 7 feet tall, agile on his feet, extremely smart navigating the paint, exceptional timing on his blocks and contests. It clearly came easy to him. He knew how to seal guys extremely well, left a big old target for Conley to hit, and once he did, which he always did, it wasn't really fair. He put up 22 a game on 74% shooting from the field as a senior. Odin was referred to as the far and away best player in high school. Some said the best post prospect since Lou L. Cinder or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He won pretty much every dumb award, I mean Gatorade Player of the Year, Mr. Basketball, McDonald's All-American. There was him, and then there was everyone else a tier below. Greg was living a life out of a movie for a high schooler. But what many people appreciated was he really didn't care. He seemed to put his head down at work, he loved the game and appreciated what he was doing for his life, but his humble attitude was apparent. He said he really didn't think of the recognition he was getting. He basically shook off his Mr. Basketball honors because he felt that teammate Mike Conley should have shared that with him, and his mother said he never was overwhelmed with all the heaping amounts of attention that he was garnering. He really was a normal kid just doing what he loved to do, but in actuality this was anything but normal. Recruiting analyst Dave Tellup said that it would be a huge upset if he's not the top pick in the 2006 draft and that it sure would have been Greg Oden that was going number one straight out of high school. But after a rule change that banned players out of high school, he had to delay that for a year attending Ohio State. The Buckeyes scored big on this one. Not only did they land Greg Oden, but a two for one with his point guard. This immediately put them into a position as a favorite nationwide. This duo was extremely hyped, but it would be a little bit before we saw them in action at the college level as Oden received a wrist surgery to repair a ligament that he hurt during his high school career. This caused him to miss the first seven games of the season, and he was heavily restricted upon his return. I mean, he wrapped the life out of it and had to resort to shooting left-handed from the free throw line for the season. This really didn't seem to limit his production very much, and the Greg Oden hype did not slow down one bit. When it came to his interior play, this guy was very good. Rebounding and blocking shots was really his forte, and paired with his impressive lateral quickness and speed, this is where he garnered his Bill Russell comparison. He was a bit raw offensively, he had a soft touch while being capable of finishing strong, but he didn't have a huge bag or anything like that. I will say he wasn't tripping over his feet or nothing, and with the right training, he could be an elite interior scorer at any level of basketball. His interior play led away to a great season, and he was rightfully earning every bit of the hype that he was getting. Steve Kerr's description of him was a once in a decade player. At 16, 10, and 3 blocks while maintaining that humble attitude, being a guy that teammates like to play around, 
and seemingly didn't get too high or too low, with some blockbuster moments in between adding to the Odin story, a game-saving and season-saving block in the last seconds of the Sweet 16 kept them dancing, and an absolutely dominant performance with 25 points, 12 boards, and 4 blocks in the National Championship against two of the best interior defenders of the 2010s in Joaquin Nolan Al Horford. The Buckeyes were shut down in the championship losing to the Gators who had an all-time lineup, but the job was done. There was debate between the top two players in the country this year. Kevin Durant took the nation by storm. I mean, he got Texas jumping, very elite shot creator at six foot whatever he is. The definition of a bucket getter, I mean, you know this guy. That being said, Greg Oden was still the best prospect in the country, and this was the near unanimous decision. As we know, there's only one Kevin Durant. He was the best player after all. So why did it make sense for Greg Oden to go number one? Well, let's look at it through their lens. Portland landed the number one pick this year. The team was ran by scorers like Zebo, who was replaced by LaMarcus Aldridge, and emerging star in Brandon Roy. What they were missing was, well, Odin, pretty much. At 32-50, and 50, it made sense for them to draft for fit as a pretty good team to land the first pick. Since Odin was seen as a low-risk option, he's not going to forget how to rebound or play hard or defend and just do his thing. He fit a role that they needed to fit, and Roy Aldridge Odin is a pretty dope core that has all the signs of a future title contender. On top of this physically, Odin was just more impressive. He was quicker than Durant in the lane agility drill, three-quarter sprint, and had a higher vertical leap. Odin wasn't a Dwight Howard, but he was very athletic, no doubt. On top of those reasons, it was basically unanimously thought that centers were going to win you championships. You could not win without your anchor, and history proved this. Eight of the last nine titles were won by the two best bigs of the era. Greg Oden was the pick that made sense here, and going back, I would have done the same thing in that situation. To a roaring We Want Oden chant, the Blazers took our boy first overall, and it wasn't long before things fell apart. A couple months before tip-off, it was announced that Oden was undergoing a microfracture surgery on his right knee, and we weren't going to see him in his rookie season. Knee injuries are scary for big guys. This was considered less than detrimental for the future of his career. An MRI scan showed that his knees were in pristine condition upon entering the league, and fans were pretty hopeful for the return of the big fella. But upon his return, he was really big fella. The Blazers kept him off his feet for the majority of the rehab, consisting of primarily weight training in which he gained 40 pounds, jumping to 290 to start the year, with a mix of some fat and some muscle. His return was exciting, and marked a turn of the corner into a new era of Blazers basketball, before it turned to just disaster. 13 minutes in, and Odin is down with a foot injury. Weight could have had something to do with it, and I don't know, or it could have had to do with the fact that his legs were two different sizes, but more injuries than games played is a horrendous start to the career. Two weeks later, and we would finally see Odin playing healthy, although under restricted minutes. The stats show that Odin was pretty good at what we expected him to be good at, and his per 36 minute numbers show that Odin was pretty damn good overall. The buzz was real for these guys, with the Royce scoring explosion, and Odin's recovery and development just adding to the ball that they had rolling. Odin came out playing even better in the following season, 11, 8.5, and 2.3 blocks in 24 minutes is real legit, and again at 36 minutes, Odin was everything that we expected him to be. It truly looked like this might be the generational talent that we thought he was, before... Before you get set up on defense. Stola gives Brooks the pick. Uh oh, oh, Greg, Greg went down and oh, his knee is. Holy cow, Portland doesn't need this. Greg Oden was stretchered off of the court with a fractured patella, requiring a second season ending surgery. A second knee injury that would lead to a third, and Oden was out of a Trailblazers uniform after this point. After three micro fracture surgeries, Oden was waived by the Blazers in 2012, playing just 82 games. His body just gave up from the get-go, and this is truly devastating as these guys had all the signs of a crew that was next up. Of the 62 games that Roy, Aldridge, and Odin played together, they put together a crazy 52-10 record. Odin was extremely tough on himself during this time, profusely apologizing to his teammates after his diagnosis for what he said was letting the team down. Odin was able to find just one more contract in the NBA with the 2014 Heat, where he was never able to find a spot in the rotation, playing in his last 23 games before ending an extraordinarily disappointing NBA career. Greg's story is sad, but this is just the start of the devastation that is Odin's story, as a black cloud seemed to haunt him, 
ever since the passing of his best friend in college. The loss to a young man was hard, and these injuries made his cloud a lot darker. He coped with the pain through excessive drinking, and these made his personal achievements higher after good games while hiding him from the many lows that he was experiencing and deteriorating his mental health in the process. The way his career played out led to his name being mocked and tarnished, and it had a very clear impact on his mental well-being and self-image. The way he talks about himself in interviews really is just hard to listen to at times, but it's hard when this is the stuff that's being said about you around the internet. It's truly embarrassing. The treatment got much worse during his time in Portland as naked pictures of himself were leaked on the internet, causing immense embarrassment. Odin's battles with depression are very disheartening to hear about, and remind you that this really was just a shy kid casted into the brightest lights before his body gave out on him. And when the criticisms came in, his human side came out, and buried him deep into a hole that was easier to lay in than to climb out of. Odin also found himself in trouble post his NBA run for repeatedly punching his ex-girlfriend in the face and being charged with felony battery. Investigators reportedly questioned Odin, who admitted to the crime, in a calm, apologetic, and cooperative manner, in which he calls the biggest mistake of his life. The reputation of Odin has really taken a hit from the generational big man that he was supposed to be, and it's crazy. From being a better prospect to KD to where we see him today, it's understandable why he's labeled as one of the biggest busts in NBA history, but realistically that is nowhere close to being true. Odin from what we saw had all the makings of what he was supposed to be before his body just gave up on him and the only difference between him and a guy like B-Roy is that he had a little more time to prove it. It's unfair to label Odin with a Kwame Browns or Hushim the Beats of the world because they were simply just bad NBA players and all of the metrics from Odin's short stint on the floor show that not only was Odin out of this category, he was a pretty damn good big guy. The real Greg Odin story is not one of a prospect busting in the league, but of a kid who lost everything he worked for at the snap of a fingers and lost himself in the process, destroying his life and mental well-being. Greg Odin's story just shows you that life moves in one direction, and living life dwelling at your misfortunes ruins your past, current, and future. At this point, Greg Oden is working on a career in coaching with Butler. After working with and graduating from Ohio State, got married, had a child, and seems to have left his demons in the past. And I really hope that he can continue to impact the game and the world in that role, as he's been through more than most. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, I love y'all boys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.